together. So the starts come thick and fast. This should be the PTS 2s, the last wave to begin at four o'clock. Good cast list for this one, as you'd expect on this World Triathlon Para Series in Leeds. Hayley Dans, third in the grand final a couple of years ago. She became a para triathlete after developing bone cancer at the age of 12. Currently ranked third on the global standings with a silver medal in Rio. And watch out and what a story for Melissa Stockwell of the United States. I mentioned Hayley Dans became a, a para triathlete through bone cancer. Melissa Stockwell was injured in a blast in Iraq in 2004 and was medically retired from the Marines with a Purple Heart and has absolutely thrived since becoming an elite sportswoman in the Paralympic movement. Got a bronze back in Rio five years ago. I have to keep reminding ourselves of that. Not four years ago, five years ago. Uh, so a really good race could develop between Hayley Dans and Melissa Stockwell. And we'll keep an eye on Lisa Leisure as well, fifth in the grand final, the Finn, who was just off the podium behind the other two uh, five years ago. But interesting stories, uh, Mark. I know we have to be quite careful sometimes with Paralympic sport. I think the backstory is relevant. It's not something to be dwelt upon, but you know, there's a lot of there's quite a big difference, I think, between those athletes who are dealing with a congenital disability from birth or from very very young and those who encounter an accident or, or go through an illness. I think that's a different level of psychological difficulty to deal with. And some, some tell you that they dream about still being able-bodied for up to 10 years afterwards. It takes them a decade to start dreaming about their life as it currently is. And what a story for somebody to be injured in Iraq, like Melissa Stockwell. And within 12 years, She's a Paralympic bronze medalist. It's phenomenal. Unbelievable story. It really is. And, and, and right through um, a lot of the para sport, there's similar stories. I mean, I was lucky enough to spend the uh, best part of two years with the British uh, para triathlon program and uh, just getting to know some of the, the personalities in it. I, I, I think what struck me the most is uh, just how humble and nice the, uh, the para athletes are. And they, you know, they don't want help, they don't want preferential treatment. Um, and they're just as happy to be here and getting the opportunity to race as the next person. And, and it is just a great group of guys and girls. Um, and I, you know, I'm lucky enough to meet some of the uh, ones from other countries as well. Um, but I will say that the, the British uh, para triathletes uh, are so well supported as well. It's a great team. Um, or, you know, you go into the para team and you could quite easily be in the able body team. Um, the staff are as you know a professional. Um, the the experts that have got involved are just as good, and you know and the care and the time that goes into the athletes is is really on par with the able body program as well now. And, and you know I, I I would say from from an outsider's point of view, I've been fortunate enough to to work on Paralympic sport for quite a long time now. It's not a coincidence to me at the most recent Winter Paralympics, there were only three nationalities commentating their live. There, were, there was the Brits, I was working on the Alpine events. There was the Brits, the Japanese being the next uh, summer hosts, hopefully touch wood. Um, and the only other nation commentating live were the South Koreans because they were hosting the event. I, you know, I, I don't think it's, I don't think the two are entirely coincidental that, you know, the athletes in Britain have done a fantastic job and the, and the support system around them is great. But I think we have an unusual level of exposure around the world. We, we give, and rightly so, and we should be doing it, and we should be doing more, which is why we're having a little go this afternoon with our four cameras, doing the best we can. Um, I, I think we're quite close to the top of the tree in Britain in the amount of airtime that we try to give to Paralympic sport. I don't think it's a coincidence that we've got so many well-known Paralympians in Britain because we put them on TV. That's it. Um, and, and I think we do a great job of finding those personalities as well. Um, they, were, they were telling me earlier that one of the guys has been on a, a well-known TV show in the last couple of weeks, uh, uh, Josh, in the earlier race. Um, he's been doing some uh, media on there and had 80 million views on wow. uh, on social media or something. Um, so, yeah, that's great to see. And, uh, you know, I think we spoke to Andy Lewis earlier and... 
uh, when I first started with the Power Program, he was like the beating heart of the of the program, was the most vocal and one of the best performing athletes that they had. And you know, he, he's got a great story to tell as well as Andy. And yeah, the, picking up on these personalities is great. There's some you know fantastic people uh, in the in the British Triathlon team, and I will give a shout out to uh, Joe Townsend, uh, who also um, you know, a great athlete in his own right, who's, who's in the wheel, wheelchair category, along with uh, Jade Jones, who are not here. Um, uh, they're not actually racing, and um, I know they'd love to be a part of, of this race, and, and, and we wish them both well. We certainly would. Right then, on this great afternoon, I, I, I don't know about you, I cannot believe how much the sun is shining. The weather has been sensational. What a fantastic backdrop this afternoon. And what about... ...ones? So tough. Imagine trying to support your, uh, your wife and your brother in the same summer leading up to the games. Great stuff there from James. Right, back out on the roads and back out on the bike. Quite a bit of action unfold. Get out as a 3,000 metre steeplechaser, a fantastic dual athlete, triathlete. And Mark, I'm still, <laughs> we can't quite work out Who's leading this swim uh, between Claire and Lauren? But all may become a little more obvious uh, when we when we get them out of the water and onto the bike. Yeah, it is really hard to tell who. So I, I do believe that that's Lauren leading the swim, uh, and and they'll have um, and she'll have Claire on her feet. Um, it, it looked like when they went round the last boy, they haven't got that far to go in the swim, and then we'll they'll um, they'll get out of the water and they'll it unzip the wetsuits. Um, the back of the wetsuit straight away and probably pull them down to sort of uh, hip height um, and then that's a lot easier for us then because we can identify the athletes a bit better. They've, as I said before they've got about 400 metres uh, run into transition so it's quite a long run into transition um, before they take off the rest of the wetsuit. Uh, put the helmet on first before they touch the bike so why you get a penalty uh, and then away onto the bike. Um, and the first bit of the bike course is actually really fast and it's a, a straight line as well. Um, so it gives the athletes a lot of time and confidence to put the, the feet into the shoes, uh, get up to speed, uh, pull the Velcro straps on so the feet are secure before they head up into the rest of the round eight park. So yeah, we, we're really close to the end, ed, end of the swim now. Um, and we'll see uh, who that athlete is who's leading. Um, again, I would be able to tell, but if I wasn't on a uh, thumbnail size um, video, which we're, we're testing your eyesight. It's you, you could tell that I'm a little bit older than you. I'm, I've gone for the comedy yeah. glasses, and I still can't tell who it is. You, you're still in the early throes of youth, where you don't need glasses yet. Uh, we're both doing our best here to try and see who's coming out of the water.